Hi, and welcome to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author, and welcome. So today is Sewing Talk Tuesday, and we are going to be doing something a little different today than what we normally do. Normally for Sewing Talk Tuesday, we sit down and we do a little chat about sewing things and crafting things and upcoming things. But I want to start doing something a little different with Sewing Talk Tuesday. So uh, today we are going to be doing an embroidery project. So for those of you who have embroidery machines, this is going to be awesome. And for those of you who are wanting to get an embroidery machine, this is going to be awesome. And so we are going to get started right now. Okay, so there are a lot of different embroidery machines. Um, you can get embroidery machines from uh, like Walmarts and Targets and all those kinds of stores. You can get them at sewing and vacuum stores where they are certified dealers to sell certain types of machines. So it just depends on what machine you have or that you want to purchase that will fit your your budget needs. Um, you want to stay within your budget for sure because embroidery is a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so I'm finding out. <laughs> so I thought quilting was expensive, but embroidery is also expensive. So when you're looking for a new machine, just kind of keep that in mind because you will need a bunch of different tools. So one of my favorite tools that I have for my embroidery machine are these really cute Tula Pink rainbow colored duck build scissors. I use this for applique and just for trimming threads. I also have a larger pair of Ginger duck build scissors too that I really, really love. Um, I like these just because they're small. <laughs> Um, so there's that. You also need thread. You will need thread. So um, I have a link in my Amazon store down below where you can actually, there's a link for some, uh, a company called Bro Thread. They sell uh, embroidery thread and I think you can get 40 spools for like $29.99 and I have used those. Here's an example of some of that thread. Um, it works great. I used it on my last project which is awesome. So I have no complaints. If you're interested in that, check them out. That's that's a really great deal. Um, and you get lots of colors and assorted colors. So today, I just want to let you know what we're going to do today. We are going to be making a tea quilt, a, a tea towel, <laughs> not a tea quilt, a tea towel. And it looks like this. Now I am working with a Kimber Bell 100% cotton tea towel. I got this in a three pack. I will link to that if I can find it again. I do believe they were sold out the last time I linked to these towels in particular. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I did pick these up in that three pack at my local sewing store. So you might want to check yours and see if they have them in there as well. The machine that I will be working with today is the Brother XV8500D, the Dream Machine. Um, I purchased this machine recently as a previously loved machine, and I am so glad that I did. It is magnificent. I love it. I get asked a lot of questions about it, so I'm going to just tell you right now that the Brother Dream Machine does come preloaded with the Disney suite on it. Um, you have all those embroidery stitches in there. It This machine does everything. So it sews, it quilts, and it does embroidery. And with our next quilt that we'll be finishing, I'm actually going to quilt it using embroidery. So it's going to be a learning experience for me as well. <laughs> but you don't need a big fancy machine to do these things. You need a machine that's going to suit you and what's gonna work best for your needs and you can still create and make beautiful things. Okay, so I wanna throw that out there. Um, we are going to be working with a five by seven hoop. 
This is just the hoop size that I chose. When I did my last tea towel, I used a very large hoop um, and that design turned out really nice and it was really big, but it was bigger than I wanted. So we're gonna try the five by seven this time. And please remember that I am still also learning this process. So we will be using Floriani medium weight stabilizer. It's a tear away. And these are the threads that we'll be working with as well. So these are Madeira threads. They are 40 weight. And yeah, I think they're called poly, they're called poly neon. So in case you're wondering. So we're gonna be working with these colors. So light pink, hot pink, kind of a brown and like a creamy white color. So I'm super excited to start this project and we are going to jump right in. All right, so here is how I prep my, um, my towel for embroidery. This is the top part that I'm holding right here up in my hands. This is the bottom part where the tag is. So I'm gonna turn this around. I have already ironed this. So I just folded it in half like this and I creased it and then I folded it long ways in half and I creased it. And then I have this, I folded it again down here to the center and creased it. That way I see that this is my center mark. This is where I really want to hoop at. So, remember this is the bottom. I'm gonna cut some stabilizer and we are using the um, five by seven hoop, like I stated earlier. So I'm gonna cut me some tearaway stabilizer off. I'm also going to grab the grid that this came with. Now I'm gonna set it right here in the center on that line. I'm probably gonna have to move this up just a tad because I wanna make sure that I'm right there. I'm going to take a, just a pencil and I'm just going to mark it with some little dots. I don't get crazy about marking this kind of stuff. You could draw a line if you wanted to use a, a uh, friction pen or anything that would come off with um, water or steam or something like that. I'm not going to do that. So now I'm just going to kind of roll that up like so, and I'm gonna put my stabilizer on here. I'm going to bring my, my towel back down. There we go. I'm gonna make sure that that's not bent. It's good, okay. So getting everything lined up is probably the hardest part of this. All right, we're on, we're on. Yay, see, it takes a little bit of messing with it to do that. Now I'm gonna tighten this because now we're on there nice and good. Okay, I'm gonna pull this on the edge just to make sure that this part is really nice and snug and tight. And there's no wrinkles, no nothing. So now you should have something that looks like this. Okay? You can see I'm right on my lines here. All right. So now we're ready to go to the embroidery machine and start our design. So this is the design we're going to make and put on our little towel. It's super cute. Okay, so I'm gonna slide in my hoop right here under the carriage here, very carefully and gently. Don't wanna get crazy fast and jam it up. So 
So we're going to put that there. And I'm going to thread the machine after I choose our design. So I've already chosen that. It says, life is short, eat dessert first. I agree with that statement. I think that looks good. All right, I'm gonna click okay, we're gonna go to embroidery. I'm going to thread the machine now. So as you can see, it just takes a little bit of playing with it. So first we're gonna start with this pink, this lighter pink, because it's gonna tell us all of our colors on the side of the screen. Your machine will probably tell you something um, similar. It may look a little different because different machines do different things. It's possible that we might run out of bobbin, <laughs> but we're going to try this anyway. We're going to give it a go. Okay. So I'm just going to thread up through the threads here. By the way, the needle threader on this machine is amazing. All right. So we are now ready to start our embroidery. Here we go.
All right, so our design is done stitching out. And now we need to trim some of these little jump stitches that happened here. Uh, my machine's pretty good about cutting them, but the little jump stitches are the little stitches that happen in between. You just wanna trim those off. So that's what I'm doing right here. Just trimming it off the front. And you can always use a lint roller to help get them off if you're having troubles. I usually just grab them and pick them off. They are these little stitches. You can see them right there and there. That's what you want to snip off. You don't want it on there. And it's easier to do it if it's in the hoop still because it's pulled tight rather than if you take it off and then you're trying to trying to do it. It's a little bit tricky when it's sewn in there. I got it though, I got it. Yay, I got it. Come on. Got it, I think that's all that I had. Looks good to me. Um, then we're going to flip this over and you can see we have more of these stitches. I just, I just give them a little trim like so. It does not have to be perfect. I mean, this is the back side, so you do you don't want a whole bunch of scragglers hanging around here, but you just trim them off. Some of them want to hang out and stay. These are my Quilter Select Duck Build Scissors. That I picked up at my local sewing and vacuum store that I bought my brother actually that I brought my bought my embroidery machine from. So it's still on there. Yes, it is. Come on. There we go. I think I finally got that one off of there. Shoo. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to remove this. Uh, we're going to take the hoop off. And then we are going to remove our tearaway stabilizer. And this is how we do it. You grab it and you gently tear it away. <laughs> Yeah, it really is that simple. So just gently give it a tug. You can pull stuff off. You're gonna wanna get in between all of these little things because it still has stabilizer in them. So I use my fingernail to start that process. You can use a pen. I'll show you how to use pen. Just take a little pin, straight pin. If you scratch it, it'll cause it to come up like that. It's just a little bit easier. You can use tweezers, but be careful because you don't want to poke a hole in your, your fabric. As you can see, it just it really just comes up really quite easily. So that is how you get the tear away off. And I did have to change my, uh, my bobbin halfway through. And that's why you see some of this is lighter and some of it is darker. Here's where I had the white bobbin and here's where I had the darker bobbin. So I'm gonna go finish 
pulling all this off because I'm not going to bore you with it. <laughs> and then um, I will come back and show you what this looks like because it'll probably take me a good 10 minutes to do this. And um, I think you're going to love it. All right. So I've got everything trimmed up on the back. I've pulled off the stabilizer. As you can see here, that's all gone now. And here is the moment of truth. Ta-da! So this is what it looks like up close. It looks great. Let me get it in the light there. And so now it'll look amazing when I hang it on my, my dishwasher, because that's where I like to hang my towels. Um, it did pucker a little bit, and that is my fault because I didn't pull it tight enough in the hoop. So when you're doing something like that, you really need to make sure it's very, very um, taut in the hoop. But that's what it looks like when it's folded. It is so cute. I love it. So if you want to make one yourself, I'll put the links down below in the description box. Designs by Juju, Kitchen Word Art. It is adorable stuff. I love it. And when you buy the file, you get more than one. So anyway, that is going to be it for me today. So if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box below. If you don't know where the description box is, there's a little arrow below this video. And if you click on that, it will open up the whole description. You'll be able to find everything that you need to know about this towel. You will need to find everything that you need to know about um, where to visit my blog and social media links and affiliate purchase links and whatnot. So if you're looking for anything, that's where you should check first. Also, um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm see it. And it also helps other people get to see what you're watching. And I think we have some pretty cool content here. <laughs> and um, also go ahead and comment and if you would like to share please do so because sharing is caring and that is it for me oh wait don't forget to subscribe oh become a subscriber subscriber you'll get notified each and every time that I upload a new video and I upload videos on Tuesdays and Fridays so you don't want to miss it you can tell YouTube how often you want to be notified and they will do that and keep on crafting I'll see you guys next time bye-bye